Welcome back to the 77th edition of the Global Weather and Climate Report for Sunday the 21st of January. Thanks for clicking on to part two and this is the global temperature anomalies for the first 21 days of both January and 2024. You can see here some very significant warmth as well as significant cold to speak about. Now we continue to see this cold theme across Northern Europe that has been lasting all the way back to October of last year. Um, just a brutal spell of below average temperatures across Norway, Sweden, Finland, into Western Russia here, even into northern portions of uh, Central Europe. Also, the UK and Ireland firmly below average for the month to date. But with the very warm final days of January, it will be interesting to see can we hold on to this cold anomaly that had been previously forecasted here on the channel, as well as marfoganweather.com. You can check out any written material available the link is in the description below for that looking at the some significant warmth and the byproduct to the reason why we've had the discharge of bitterly cold air into europe and north america is strong anomalous warm pools over both alaska as well as across eastern canada and across the baffin straits and in the greenland there's your negative arctic oscillation north atlantic oscillation signature and in comes the bitterly cold arctic air driving from Nunavut territory where we've seen temperatures of minus 50 the first minus 50 in January in Alberta since back 20 years ago you have to go all the way back to 2004 for the last time Alberta reached a minus 50 or colder and uh, that colder drove all the way down through Montana where we've seen the coldest temperatures uh, in the United States and all the way down into the heart of Texas the deep south in the eastern portion of North America as well. We've got the other cool areas to speak about. Far eastern Russia, uh, southeastern China, I believe anomalous rainfall over the last year or so has contributed to below average temperatures here in northern India. We've also continued to see cooler than average across the heart of the Africa, over the, particularly the, the equatorial region, but we also have warmer than average across the north and the south of Africa. The majority of Australia is below average with the, uh, some parts uh, actually slightly below average. The west coast of Western Australia is below average here. Parts of Northern Territories, uh, not so much across uh, Queensland, uh, but down into New, New South Wales, etc. We're seeing some uh, below average conditions. Very warm compared to average across New Zealand. Cool and average across Argentina, but you've got a backdrop of warmth across the continent of South America. Uh, that is your um, that is your fingerprint of the El Nino, of course, that is ongoing. And even the water temperature anomalies here, you notice here that we're starting to see the focus of above average temperatures now peeling away from South America. So there's your El Nino weakening in Nino region 1.2, strengthening or holding, holding at a very high level uh, in Nino region 3.4, which is the, the area that, that actually El Nino was measured by and Nino region uh, further across uh, towards the Australia and Asia side is actually warmer than average as well. But the, the Manjulian oscillation has really done a work on both drought and record, continuous record heat in parts of Indonesia up into Borneo, uh, the Malay Peninsula here, so Southeastern Asia and the countries adjacent to Thailand, Cambodia, Laos, uh, Vietnam, uh, is all seeing some exceptionally warm conditions bearing in mind that it's winter time even here in the subtropics uh, central and southern portions of india is also above average but very warm conditions as you can see here pakistan iran in the central asian countries in southeastern europe including turkey greece uh, cyprus seeing record breaking warm temperatures at the moment a massive contrast between turkey and Scandinavia and Western Russia, a very dramatic contrast in the first 21 days of January here. So looking at Europe specifically, and you can see for the month to date, it is firmly below average across the north and central portions of Europe, warmer than average, uh, Iberia, uh, Greece, uh, Turkey, Italy. This region here is uh, running above average and quite often when you've got a cold west or north of Europe, uh, southern and southeastern portions of the continent tends to be warmer than average 
in response to that. Incidentally, my personal weather station has now set a new uh, record low. Uh, it's sitting currently at the uh, 970 millibars and it uh, surpasses the record of 971 millibars. Now, the site has only been in operation for a year, but in 10 days, it's went from a record high of 1044 millibars to a record low of 10, uh, sorry, 970 millibars, which is rather dramatic stuff, if you ask me. So let's have a look and see what was, is going on with the Storm Isha at the moment. These are the current amber warnings in place at the moment here. Now, the strongest winds currently over Western and Southern Ireland, across the heart of Wales, southwestern England. All less strong winds are going to start to transfer northwards as the system and its deep centre at around 954 millibars at the moment. That will continue to lift and track northeastwards, kind of skirting the western side of Scotland. As the centre of low pressure is likely to drop below uh, 950 millibars, 948, 949 millibars is likely where it peaks. We are going to see the strongest winds up through northern England, southern and central Scotland, where we could see a, a, a risk of 80 to 90 mile per hour winds and exposure over Cairngorm summit, elevation just over 4,000 feet. Wouldn't be surprised if we we'll see a wind gust of 140 miles per hour here. But unfortunately, due to rime ice buildup, it is not uh, reporting at the moment, which is rather disappointing, actually, because it would have been interesting to see how strong these winds actually get over the Cairngorm Plateau through the course of tonight and into tomorrow morning. But we are going to see some very high gusts over the top of the Pennines, Southern Uplands, Central and Northern Highlands. And we could see wind gusts in excess of 70 miles per hour across a broad area, central belt, and across the highlands. Transfer of strongest winds goes north up the west coast is where we're going to have the threat of 80 to 90 mile per hour winds, I think, but also to the lee of high ground, parts of Caithness, Sutherland, Aberdeenshire, right down the eastern side of both Scotland and England. We could see uh, some very powerful gusts as those winds cross over the high ground. They can accelerate as the downslope towards, uh, say, for example, the, the A90 corridor, the M1, the A1, even the A9, we may see some very powerful uh, wind gusts through the course of this evening. Northern Ireland, also, we could see 70, 80 mile per hour winds uh, through the course of this evening. So Storm Isha is going to pose a very significant wind threat, but also uh, significant rainfall, which would enhance um, any kind of flooding don't think the dry spell has been lived long enough uh, in order to alleviate the rainfall that we're going to see. Upwards of 100 plus millimetres of rain may fall over the next few days here. So as we move on here, as promised, I wanted to talk about the coldest air in decades that affected Northern Europe and also North America here. So I'm going to try and skim through this. This is an article that is freely available on marfanandweather.com. Link is in the description below, so check that out. But the, the cold had been really notable indeed. Now, the coldest temperature anywhere in Scandinavia during the early portions of January, probably the coldest in decades to start a new year, may I add. But one particular location in Swedish Lapland dropped to minus 44.6 Celsius. Not only was that the coldest uh, for any time, any month, anywhere in Scandinavia, uh, and, and also the coldest anywhere in Sweden since 1999, we did see values, unofficial values, even colder than that. Finland got into the mid minus 40s, as well as Sweden. There was unofficial reports uh, of minus uh, 45 in parts of Sweden, but also minus 49 in parts of, of, of Norway as well. Now, we also seen Sweden's uh, an all time record at one particular location here. I'm not going to try and pronounce it, but the uh, a maximum temperature of minus 42.3 Celsius was achieved at this one location. That um, site saw a record cold temperature as well as a record cold maximum temperature on the same 24-hour period, I believe. This was also Sweden's cold, fourth coldest daytime maximum ever recorded, which is rather fascinating stuff. So very interesting indeed. We also had one of the warmest Christmases on record for North America, and then in came the brutal Arctic air. Following the warmest December on record, Alberta records the first minus 50 in January in 20 years here. And we did see uh, the lowest temperature was minus 
five at Keg Creek in Alberta. Coldest January reading for Alberta since say January of two thousand and four. We also seen some exceptional low temperatures. Individual stations recording all time records. Minus forty two point six at uh, Yoho National Park in British Columbia. Here, other areas of British Columbia. We also seen some exceptional cold temperatures even in Vancouver. Minus twelve point nine at Vancouver. Seven a.m. Uh, for the, that was the coldest in January since ninety three. We did see a minus four. Uh, sorry, minus fifteen point three was recorded in December of two thousand and one or two thousand twenty one. Sorry, so that was quite recent. But this was outstanding. Five consecutive nights at or below minus 40 in Edmonton, Alberta. And we had three nights in a row below minus 40, 45 Celsius. And that uh, string of minus 40 was actually a tie of a record here. Uh, incidentally, Alberta, um, Edmonton uh, Airport actually has two individual weather stations. So there's a little bit of confusion with regards to uh, numbers here but it was both the second and the third coldest ever recorded temperature at the airport in Edmonton also looks as if a high of minus 33.6 you imagine what a high of minus 33.6 would feel like uh, it was also likely the coldest in 20 years for uh, Edmonton that's according to Thierry Goose and thanks to Thierry for his tremendous information also Meteorologist David Spence let me know that the coldest temperature recorded in Calgary, Alberta, was minus 36.2. And this was the coldest night since 1997 at this particular site. Now, they also recorded a maximum temperature of minus 30.4. This marked the city's coldest since February 1st, 1989, when the temperature didn't rise above minus 31.9 Celsius. And then record breaking cold drifted across the barbed wire fence uh, the coldest being chester montana where we had a, a temperature of minus 54 fahrenheit or minus 47 point something celsius so that was achieved in the northern rockies uh, and, and the, the montana the state of montana but also some very very impressive cold both record daily temperatures as well as monthly records even all time records were achieved in a few locations across the upper midwest and across the northern rockies incidentally there was a temperature of, of minus 11.7 recorded at 3200 meters above sea level and that was in the central greenland ice cap location of, of, of summit camp so very very unusual mild conditions across greenland that is often the case with a strong negative arctic oscillation north atlantic oscillation bitterly cold over north america and bitterly cold over Europe, you often, nine times out of ten, see Greenland unusually warm in response. So here's a very one, interesting one that really caught my attention. Both the sound, the UK's most northerly official weather station, recorded a temperature with clear skies, calm winds, and snow-covered ground. Unusual conditions for this particular location, surrounded by Atlantic waters, the temperature dropped to minus 10.4 Celsius at both the Sound and Shetland, a settlement in Unst, the most northerly inhabited island in the UK. Thanks to unusually calm conditions, this is a new monthly record, by the way, and also 1.5 Celsius off the all time record for both the Sound and Shetland in general. Tweet by Medjam here saying that Benson's Ox Oxfordshire's temperature of minus 11 Celsius without any snow cover, as well, by the way was the coldest January night there since the 9th of January 2010. Certainly um, has been a very cold night for some. As, as is also often the case, by the way, when you've got really cold North America and uh, Europe, it tends to be unusually warm over parts of Siberia. And we did see that the case of plus 10 Celsius during the overnight period, sorry, in parts of Siberia, when we've seen really cold on our side of the pool. Across the Southeast Asia and Bangkok recorded an all-time uh, uh, hot minimum temperature of 28.5 Celsius. This is indicative of the MGO phase uh, of uh, enhanced dry conditions, stronger high pressure in this region of the world. Also with a negative NAO, you tend to have hot conditions across the Canaries, Northwest Africa. That was the case when we've seen the bitterly cold air over the UK and Ireland. Uh, record warm minimum temperatures across uh, the Canaries, Morocco, where we've seen 23 Celsius during the overnight temperatures, 
middle of the night recorded the 26 27 celsius in parts of grand canaria morocco 22.9